everyone, Shre here and welcome to World of Warships as today we're going to be looking at the update 12.3 being <laughs> this name uh, for a new map uh, Wargaming is introducing here into World of Warships. So I'm going to go through uh, the article and hopefully my goal is to make this within 25 minutes but uh, we'll see. So a bit of a summary of um, all the different things um, going into uh, the new update which as this video goes out, uh, it will be today when this new update hits the servers. So there's an art of, or a video with, uh, I think they call her Tina. Yeah, so looks like they get another person for that. Um, they have a new map. Um, I don't know if it's pronounced uh, shells. Like you almost wanted to say seashells. Seashells, I don't know. Uh, anyhow, um, I did play this map on the public test server. Um, it's okay, but there are some flaws in terms of positioning. Like, kind of like this whole area is a no-go unless you're a destroyer submarine. Um, cruiser can be very difficult, especially if you're a cruiser who wants to, like, let's say you're a Stalingrad and you want to move up to either of these islands. Um, your concealment is so poor that you're likely to be punished um, and push into a crossfire, you know, if there's a battleship catches you out this way, um, and some focus coming from this flank. Um, I'm a little concerned, like, here on the backside, I feel like there's more islands on the north spawn. You have, uh, let's see, four, five, where you get three over here. So, I'm kind of interested to see how these islands will favor. Like, to me, I feel like this island would favor a bit more, being closer over on the 10 line. So, um... Yeah, we got to see. I don't know in terms of how well I could say it's balanced, but a lot of times when I'm playing cruiser, I play in around here, or, you know, you got some places you can position up here. So, well done to Wargaming, at least. We have another map in the game. Um, we have a new dockyard. I will do a video on this uh, sooner than later. I know some other content creators have already been featuring talking about the ship. It's a new Tier 9 Japanese battleship, the Dyson, with 410 millimeter guns. Kind of reminds me a little bit of the Heisen um, that they had in an early dockyard, which is a crap ship that you hardly ever see uh, being played in the game. Uh, but one of the gimmicks, of course, is that, well, the Signison has a rather short reload time for a battleship, and um, I'm not sure actually what that is. I haven't looked at it. Um, but you have four quadruple tube torpedo launchers, which I think they're 10 kilometers. That means you can put 16 torpedoes in the water, eight on each side. So, um, Oh, it says long-range torpedoes. Okay, well, I thought it said, I heard in the video it said 10 kilometers when I was um, listening to something the other day. So it's probably longer than 10 kilometers, and it probably has a decent detectability range uh, on those torpedoes. Claiming to be a fast battleship, um, large turning circle radius with a rather small HP pool, access to repair party slots, fighter, and spotting aircraft. So I'll dive into the dockyard and give you best tips i'll probably break with tradition and if i'm able well i don't know i was thinking maybe i could pull one off tomorrow but i'm just really busy right now with work and haven't even caught up with your guys' comments which i promise to do so uh soon they've also updated the port of cure to mark the event um so i'll go over the dockyard in a dedicated video so i'm not going to take the time uh, to do that all right now i want to be real mindful of the timing of this uh, video on the update but you can see it all here so I think there's gonna be five phases that you're gonna have to purchase um, and off the bat I don't know if Heisen's worth it or Dyson is worth it or not so I'll have to look a little more closely before I give you my uh, official thoughts because I don't want to speak too soon uh, British submarines going live um, so the British submarines will come out of early access and be available for all players to research. So um, we can see how this goes. <laughs> you have the uh, ending, sturdy thrasher. Um, I think one of the things is that they have a large dive capacity, but uh, a, a longer replenishing time. Yeah, but recharges slowly. Small health pools. Um, yeah, so a little different to your counterpart. Uh, you get a quick. Uh, to reload for a full salvo and have a decent range and speed so you can launch massive salvos which salvos which um you don't have the you only have acoustic coming torpedoes you don't have the harder hitting torpedoes um so these are probably you know maybe more destroyer cruiser killers but 
And of course, you play it well. You can inflict a lot of damage on any ship class uh, in the game with the submarines. Uh, early access to Pan American Cruisers. Early access to Pan American Cruisers ongoing in update 12.3. So for two weeks following the update's release, you'll still have the option to complete combat mission groups and obtain Pan American tokens, economic bonuses, and the Pan American Cruisers commemorative flag. So the special chain of combat missions will be available for those who possess researchable Pan American Cruisers. Um, so you can actually get some uh, permanent economic bonuses tied to the lower tier ships um, just for playing them. Uh, so I've done that with the La Argentina uh, and then the tier seven. Um, so, uh, so far I've been impressed with the line. Uh, I got to click the right one. Um, I played La Argentina, the, this one. <laughs> but I've heard they've been maybe a little more questionable as you go higher tier, but I've just not uh, played it for myself yet. So I think I have, yeah, I've got this one now. I think, I don't know if I have this one yet. Uh, I think I do. Uh, so I just need to hop in and play them and do some more first impression videos. As you guys have responded really well to this first impression videos of the Pan American Cruisers. Um, Battle Pass, uh, what are they gonna do this time? Um, da, 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 da. Final World of the Battle Pass will include King of the Sea and Rare Bonuses containers. The Premium Battle Pass will bring you even more valuable in-game items and its final reward is three construction phases at the dockyard, okay. So then you, if you buy the Battle Pass, the Premium Battle Pass, then you only have to purchase two dockyard phases rather than three. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind when I look at the um, the starter packs for the Dockyard event. Allied Heroes Collection. Um, this is actually cool. Um, the fresh update includes our al new Allied Heroes Collection dedicated to the end of World War II in Europe. The collection consists of six pages with two elements on each page. The reward for completing each page is a 10-point skill commander of one of the Allied Nations. And you complete the entire collection, and you get three days premium. Congratulations. You can change duplicates at the rate of uh, one for one. Um, so yeah, that's cool to focus a little bit more on some World War II history. So I think this is uh, good. So I welcome uh, this new Allied Heroes collection in the game and learn a little bit more about history. The Inca Trail Adventure uh, starts May 12th, so next month. This adventure will see you follow a pair of Dutch sailors who have decided to use their precisely, preciously short vacation to get to know the Peruvian culture and collect various souvenirs. Okay. As rewards for completing the event's common mission, you receive Inca tokens, the Inca trail commemorative flag, and more useful items. During the adventure, you may also receive the Rotterdam and Tumi, Tumai themed patches. The Inca tokens are a new temporary resource that you can exchange for random bundles that can drop the premium Almirante Gra with a 10 point skill commander and a commemorative flag. The ancient toad and permanent camouflage for Almirante Gra and other rewards. It is possible to obtain additional tokens in the army exchange for doubloons. The Almirante Gra was the flagship of the Peruvian Navy. She was acquired from the Netherlands and named after Admiral Miguel Gra Seminaro, Santa Maria. The ship is armed with eight hundred fifty-two millimeter main guns housed in four turrets that can rotate 360 degrees. The main feature of the ship is access to combat instructions, shocker. The progress bar fills up while the cruiser remains undetected, and activating combat instructions significantly reduces the main battery reload time. Okay. The ship features low detectability and efficient AA defenses, but has weak armor and a small health pool. The consumable at her disposable is including of the hydrophysic search and defensive AA fire consumable. Okay, looks interesting. Yeah, definitely look. Yeah, definitely a light cruiser. I mean, it's got 152 millimeter guns anyhow. So. So yeah, so. So it's kind of following the Dutch sailor life. When you're vis when you're a sailor and you're visiting different uh, countries, you're docking at different uh, countries, uh, while serving. So. Hmm. I don't know. That'll be interesting to see. New combat mission type. Um, in update 12.3, we welcome a new type of combat mission codenamed Naval Superiority. Okay, I think I saw this on the public test server. These missions will be allocated to players who take part in special activities on our website. Ugh. <laughs> so in order to do the Naval Combat, this Naval Superiority, 
you have, I wonder how much that requires. Like, is it just a couple clicks or is it more? Because sometimes when these things aren't in game, like I just don't activate and I don't mess with them because it's just not in the port window. Such missions will count towards a player's progress in these activities. Unlike standard missions, these act missions don't have any fixed criteria that must be achieved to complete them. The only limit that exists is time. Once the deadline arrives, the result of all participating players are summed up. For example, to receive a reward for participating in a website activity, the participant might need to rank among the top 50 players by damage caused throughout the activity's duration. <laughs> The mission will show how much damage a player has dealt at the current moment. After the mission expires, the results will be summed up and the best players will receive the corresponding rewards. In the mission description, you'll be able to find a link to our website with details about corresponding activity. Stay tuned for more news on our website so you won't miss our special activities. Can I see what this is? Earn as much base XP as you can. <laughs> uh, your score, so it shows, wow, almost 350,000 base XP. Dang, that's a lot of base XP. Um, this just shows the same same picture. Wait, 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 wait. Um, these missions don't have any fixed criteria. Okay, so these missions don't have any fixed criteria. The only limit that exists is time. That's kind of weird because it's like criteria is. Okay, so I guess they're just using different verbiage. So, you know, you set to play tier 5 through tier 10 or it being a super ship, but it doesn't have to be a nation or a specific class. And basic speed. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Final reward is a ghost coming out of a box. <laughs> okay. Um, so this is geared at trying to get players to play the game more and that you can be recognized as the best of the best. This is something um, that people play with a, only with a lot of time, like especially with base XP, like that just means play the game. Um, so really it's gonna be the sweaty nerds or the people who use bots for their ships um, to get as much base XP as possible just to get into that. So um, if you're a casual player, uh, don't even bother. <laughs> That's what I would tell you. Uh, brawls, uh, there's going to be four brawls. So Brawl 1 uh, is Tier 9 Battleships in a 4 versus 4 format. Divisions of up to two players allowed. Okay. Nice to see divisions. So Battleships, we're going to see a lot of Georgia, Jean Barre, Pomeran, uh, Prince Ruprecht. Just off the top of my head. And if... Oh, you're going to see Dysons. People are going to wail, and then you're going to see uh, highs, uh, the Dysons and Brawls. That's funny. Brawl 2 is tier 10 destroyers in a 3 vs 3 format. Divisions with two players allowed. Okay, the divisions are pretty powerful on brawls. Um, brawl 3, tier 7 battleships, cruisers, and destroyers, and submarines in a 5 vs format. So that's almost like a like, min like smaller ranked. Team may have a maximum of two battleships, four destroyers, and one submarine. Divisions up to five players are allowed. Okay, you're going to have a, a, a clan versus... <laughs> Uh, people, uh, the enemy team that has uh, no, uh, no divisions or no clans. Uh, tier seven cruisers in one v one format for brawl four. Okay, well, that, it's interesting seeing the things played around. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, division star. Um, division stars are back. Um, this is if you are in a clan, you earn division stars for playing with other clan mates. And so you get these rewards. So and you get one division star, you get a million credits. You get seven, you get 25 Sierra Mike. Uh, you get 15, you get a uh, distant voyages container, which has a chance of giving you permanent camouflage. And then some steel and then just oil. Um, so what, yeah, so the criteria for this is that one, you have to win a battle, which is pretty easy. You know, you could even do that in co-op. And then the others have to be done in random, so like earning the shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder division achievement, or <clears throat> earning the coordinated attack division achievement, which essentially would be like um, killing seven enemy players. Uh, so often you can actually knock these out uh, clubbing at low tiers, so like tier two, three, or four. Um, tier two in particular for the coordinated attack, because you get a lot of bots 
at the lower tier, assuming they haven't put it some sort of a tier uh, requirements that you have to be tier five or higher. But last time I had done this uh, with some of my clanmates, <clears throat> they didn't have one. Okay, technical updates. So they're working on issues of ships getting stuck near islands. Okay, that took you a long time. <laughs> wow. In update 12.3, we're going to add sliding mechanics for ships that make contact with land or shallow water. These will allow the ships to continue moving freely without running aground. In future updates, we're going to change the island collision models on maps so that they fully match the contours of the islands in the game. We've updated the following sound effects. Okay, before we get to sound effects, like, where was this last year, Wargaming? <laughs> where was sliding last year when they um the reason why this became a big issue was the introduction of submarines so they um started introducing um subsea um terrain particularly around islands so you could be i mean i mean you could be a slight distance away from the island all of a sudden just run aground and there's just some random boulder coming out from underneath that you just ran aground on um and it wasn't even attached to the island. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes it's, it's honestly, it's pretty stupid. The, the situation is that I feel like I'm far enough away from the island, but I still run aground um, because of submarines. Thank you, we're gaming. So hopefully that will be decent. Um, updating the following sound effects and launching of torpedoes by surface ships. Um, yes, I have. It's kind of interesting. I was playing public test server and I heard this new sound. Um, and every launch torpedo will produce a separate sound effect. So if you like launch four, it's going to be like a uh, tick, 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 tick kind of deal. Um, not that I'm recreating the exact sound, but um, so that's a bit interesting. So I guess it's to sound more realistic. Uh, make the sounds more realistic in the game, but we can't actually make uh, <laughs> magical pixie dust in the form of combat missions or yeah. Don't even get into that. Dropping of ammunition by all squadrons in operation of attack aircraft machine guns. Oh, okay, that's weird. Dropping of ammunition by all squadrons in the operation. Okay, so they're just talking about like your bombs. Oh no, but this is uh, of aircraft machine guns. <laughs> Why it take so much time to invest in this? No one was complaining about the sounds in the game, Wargaming. We complain about broken matchmaking, um, ships being stuck on islands, which now you're working on, and then you're balancing, like, you don't have a balance department. And shotgunning submarines is, uh, sh submarine shotgunning is still a thing, so. Main battery shells flying above a ship. The hissing sound of bombs dropped by bombers and the sound of skip bombers launched bombs as they bounce off the water surface. Ships colliding with islands and other ships. The intensity of the sound will depend on the speed of your ship. Okay, is that why they had the beginning of the video, like the ship crashing on the island and like exploding and breaking into three different parts? Which does not happen in the game, but they did it in the video. Um, we've updated the description icons and pop-up hints for the burst fire mode. They now more closely match the bonuses of the alternative fire mode and describe in more detail how this mechanic works for different ships. We've had the ability to switch to fire mode and port main battery shell icons have also been updated. So then what? It's gone from this. Okay. Okay, interesting. But yeah, but I mean, you have people who they only use burst fire, then they're useless for 30 some seconds in Annapolis, so. Okay, return of Holo Live production. Update 12.3 brings back the heroes of Holo Live production. Popular Japanese VTubers are ready for the ranks of commanders and plunge into the heat of naval battles back to back with players. Welcome four new commanders of uh, each with an individual voiceover. Shuishiro Botan, Muna Hoshinova, Watson Amelia, and Takanashi Kiria. During the event, you'll also be able to obtain a special expendable camouflage and commemorative flag. Okay, I don't know if I really have any comments on that. 
Warhammer 40k. It looks like it's coming back into the game. World Warship is saying, stage welcome back. Uh, space fleets from the distant future. The Imperial Navy and Space Forces of the Black Templars will face the ferocious forces of chaos and vehement English. Uh, vehem <laughs> vehement? Ah, gosh, dang it. I'm learning the region and I forget how to pronounce some English words sometimes. Space Corsairs, the Orcs, the characters of the Warhammer 40k universe are returning in update 12.3. Who said, will you take? Familiar ships uh, that will return that you can buy. They're, these ships are just, um, they have a unique uh, permanent camouflage, but they're just the copy and paste of existing ships in the game. So Ship Smasha, Cross of Dorne, Ignis Purgatio, and Ragnarok, as well as their commanders, visual camouflages, and other themed content. We've also updated the contents of the Warhammer 40k premium container. Each Warhammer 40k premium container now drop 14 were economic bonuses of each ship type. The drop rate of each type is 14%. The drop rates of the themed experimental camouflages with the container have been reduced accordingly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see how that goes over. Uh, Armory, the Re research bureau has been stocked with new upgrades for the Holland and Venezia. I've been excited for this um, in exchange for 19,200 research points. So advanced mechanical maintenance uh, for Holland in stock six. Uh, this actually seems pretty good. Um, it increases her health pool recovery efficiency when using the prepare party consumable from 15, uh, 50 to 75%. And increases the ship's maximum speed by 8% while the engine boost consumable is active. All consumables gain one additional charge. So that means you can have additional um, defensive AA, additional uh, repair party consumable. So your heal back potential now with this um, advanced mechanical maintenance for Holland in slot six is really good. Um, at the cost that either you have to give up AA, torpedo reload time, or the main battery uh, reload modification. So yeah, so it means she's gonna be able to stick around longer in the fights. For Venezia, they did the augmented smoke generators. Uh, this goes in slot five, so you have to give up concealment if you do concealment uh, with Venezia. Provides two additional smoke generator consumable charges. It reduces the exhaust smoke generator consumable cooldown time from 180 to 81 seconds. So they shaved off 99 seconds. Uh, apparently 100 seconds was too much. Uh, so you can have your exhaust smoke generators uh, more frequently, more ready every minute, 21 seconds. Um, and then you should be able with, was it November Foxtrot or uh, low, um, drop the cooldown time by a few seconds on this too. You know, uh, I can't remember if it's that combat signal or a different one. Changes to the naval community tab. The limit on the number of King of Sea containers you can purchase has been updated. You now be able to purchase up to three containers again, even if you previously hit the limit. We've added the King of the Sea Gladiator permanent camouflage for the tier eight Admiral Hipper, available for 10,000 community tokens. So this is pretty cool. But the fact that you can get the uh, King of the Sea containers again is great. Um, you get a tier seven premium ship container upon completion of that collection. So definitely do that, as I think the King of the Seas um, events tournament is kicking off again. Um, I've not heard much about it, just that not as many people signed up or clan signed up for this time around, uh, last I knew. So check that out in the community tab and it'll be exchanged for community tokens. Um, other changes, you have now the option to preview voiceovers before purchasing commanders that will come with individual voiceovers. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, you're thinking of the Kong and Godzilla event with uh, King Kong and Godzilla, they're like with unique voiceovers, and it was like, rawr, rawr, rawr. <laughs> People were so mad about that with unique voiceovers, and it's just a lizard roaring and a, uh, a monkey making monkey noises. <laughs> We've updated the display of pop up hints for various resources. It's now possible to preview ships and camouflages that drop from containers. That's cool. So welcome that. I've already picked up my day of premium. You need one day of Forge Worship's premium account just by reading the article and finding where it's at. So we're almost done here. Content additions and changes. To celebrate the Golden Week event, the following items will appear in the game. Golden Week standard and premium containers. Um, and then Japanese uh, lacquer permanent camouflage for the tier 10 Yamato and tier 5 Congo. And I think they both look great, but I'm totally a fan of this permanent camouflage um, for Yamato. I think it looks so cool, and I would absolutely love to have it. 
Uh, Congo, I don't really play too much, but I mean, Congo is a pretty good tier 5 battleship. Um, but for Yamato, to me, this just looks really sick and really cool. Um, so, I'm guessing the only way to get these is by purchasing containers that have gambling to get this nice permanent camouflage. The port of Zimpangu will be decorated to mark the event. The update brings the following items to the game. North Carolina CLR and Tier 9 Rune CLR ships. Their tech specs are similar to those of the North Carolina and Rune of their modules researched. So I'm guessing these are just... Um, well, I don't know if it's like the Kitakaze in Edinburgh, but they just look like you can buy a tech tree ship with a camouflage. I don't know why they don't just sell the camouflage, like a you know the permanent camouflage you can choose to mount. But uh, of course, the reason why they're doing this is to get players to just straight up buy the ship, which means they have to spend more money to do so. So, um, at your own discretion. As far as I know, there's nothing different with the ships except their cosmetic differences. Um, Volga flotilla and blue cruiser permanent camouflages for Sovetsky Soyuz and the Tashkent 39 respectively. Details on how to obtain these in-game events will be announced later. Um, the, the super ship, the tier, uh, tier, super ship, the American destroyer and the super ship for the Pan-Asian destroyers uh, are stemming towards the respective national ship branches. Both ships were previously offered at the auction that took place in update 12.1. Um, the, the ships will be available for 45,000, uh, sorry, 45 million uh, credits each. Um, updates have been made to the personal appearance of the flying commanders, P. Earthling, Stinker Claws. No, <laughs> so I read that wrong. Uh, Center Claws. It's not Stinker Claws. Uh, Rotten Konig, Dalon, and Boris the Pipe. Okay. Uh, contents of the town cruisers. Uh, containers, the in-town cruiser premium containers have also been updated. Details of the new events. The contents of these containers will be available, uh, or are available in this article. Farm ships have been added to the testing by developers, super testers, and community contributors. We have the super ship of the branch of the Russian cruisers from the Petropavlovsk to the Novosibirsk. So, really not sure how that's going to go because I feel like Petropavlovsk is already a tier 11 ship or is this ship going to be like a tier, essentially a tier 12, tier 13 ship? Um, also, uh, as predicted, the devastation coming into the game, the super conqueror, uh, essentially. Uh, so when they did a buff on the British battleships lines, like I think that was uh, last, yeah, it was fall of last year, I think. Um, they updated the Sigma slightly, I think, on Monarch and Lion, and I don't think they did anything to Conqueror, I don't remember. It's kind of a pain grinding that line until you got really to Conqueror. Um, so we thought, oh yeah, that means they're going to be bringing a super British battleship in, which they are. We're also going to see West Virginia 44. We're going to see premium ship. Um, this looks like, a, I think it's this ship looks like a tier 2 ship, but it's tier 9. It's a massive torpedo armament. European destroyer Jaeger probably pronouncing that wrong and then the tier 9 american destroyer the half ford which i'm pretty sure they just talked about in a recent uh, development blog i think this is a hybrid destroyer that gets access to aircraft and uh, not like trump but like you can control the aircraft so i'm guessing it's like a he uh, airstrike so that's exactly what we needed more and now like i don't even want to get into all this but you're gonna have these destroyer players who get this ship and they're gonna be sitting in spawn and they're gonna be flying around in their planes and they're not even gonna be utilizing a destroyer so essentially you're gonna be a destroyer down on your team so let's say you have three destroyers versus three destroyers immediately i think will become a two versus three um because they're probably just sit in, sit in their smoke and spam their aircraft so uh, or gaming upcoming change upcoming changes um so yeah so and uh you have one month left or roughly four weeks let me say roughly four weeks if you want to get the Gronigan, hayate azuma or Agir for free xp a uh, million free xp two million free xp million and a million they'll no longer be available to purchase in the tech tree for free xp but they will be moved to the armory in exchange for coal 
So actually, I blew 2 million free XP to go and pick up Hayate. I don't really know if I feel that was the best decision, if I should have just waited to use coal. Um, instead, use my free XP to do some research bureau um, stacking of um, resetting lines. So I actually haven't had a first impressions yet video on the Hayate because I actually haven't even played it yet. But I thought ah, I was weak. I went ahead and purchased it. Other changes and improvements, um, they've optimized the way the in-game filters work. Um, and the ship curves on the port will scroll faster. Um, and a lot of other things. The in-game browser has been updated to a new version. The arms race mode has been updated. The display of a key area spawn timer. Added a tooltip that pops up when you hover over the timer. And updated the indication of capturing the key area and picking up buffs. Um, from now on, once you lock onto a target manually, the lock will not be lost even if your target disappears from a site for a short time. Okay, so I wonder how much time that is. Um, the armor layout of Tier 7 California has been updated to accommodate the new technology we touched upon in detail in our article uh, update 10.9. Um... They updated the description of the Will to Victory talent of the unique commander Nikolai Kuznetsev. Removed the letter designation from Hall A for a number of tier 10 ships. Removed the letter designations of shell types HE, AP, SAP from the ship's armament panel. Updated a pop up hint displayed above ships with a bounty marker. Personalizations would now be activated by default when purchasing commanders that have personalizations. Fixed the geometry and textures of the following ships. Okay, so a lot of ships and even some really old ships in the game. Um, yeah, so they've done a lot. I'm not gonna go more into this, so. Um, I guess there's some okay things here. Um, and there's not so great things here. I don't feel like it was as bad as the last, or the last update article that I read. I mean, the army will be cool to get the, um, Unique upgrades for Holland and Venezia. That's really cool. Content additions and changes. Mm, it is what it is. You know, Warhammer 40k is back. That's good. Um, I don't. They've added more commanders in the game. So for Japanese VTubers, so uh, cool for the Japanese audience um, and other audience that likes VTubers. Um, some technical updates. I mean, this uh, sliding mechanics for to get ships off the island. That's really good. But I don't know why it took them over a year to address this, like, or roughly a year. Like, this should have been done much sooner. And why spend so much time on the sound mechanics? Mm, I don't know. Uh, division Star is coming back. Cool. Some cool brawl options. Good that you can division. Um, that's good to see. Hopefully it's not busted where if you just all drop at the same time, you all end up on the same team. I think that was brawl. Uh, new combat mission type. You know, if you're just a casual player, I mean, I would consider myself a casual player. Don't even bother. You know, when they get, if it's going to be base XP, I mean, that's ridiculous. Like, if I have a really good game, like, maybe I get 3,000 base XP. But on average, uh, when I'm playing randoms or ranked, I'm, rough, I'm over 1,000. Sometimes I get some 2,000 games, but that's just, like... Because I wonder, like... Can I even, like, do the math? I'm like, how many battles would that even be? So it's like, let's say it's 250,000. And then let's say you get... I mean, yeah. Let's just say you get 1,000 base XP every game. Like, yeah, that's just going to be... You're going to have to play 350 battles. And let's say that takes about 10 minutes for each battle, which some will blow out sooner. I mean, probably needs to be more like 12.5 or something, but we'll do that. So that means you have to have 3,500... Uh, minutes played, which divided by 60. Yeah, it means like 58 hours of game time. Roughly, give or take. So probably, more realistically, I mean, you have some games that just go up to like uh, full 20 minutes, so it's probably like 60 hours of gameplay. 60 hours in one update. So let's say that's like four weeks. So that means playing 15 hours a week. 
and divide by seven, which means you need to play roughly two hours, over two hours a day. So probably two and a half hours a day at least. So yeah, the grind, the grind of World of Warships. We're doing you a favor, actually we're not. In Control Adventure, okay, interesting. Welcome the Allied Heroes Collection, that's cool. Um, battle Pass, um, I mean the final, re I mean they started off with the Battle Pass with you actually got a premium ship. And now it's like, oh, we get a tech tree ship. Oh, get another tech tree ship. Um, get some, uh, what was it called for the Snowflakes event for the Christmas event? Uh, New Year certificates. And I mean, the final reward of being three dockyard phases, I mean, that's probably good. So um, this battle pass could be worth it if you really want to pick up the Dyson. So I'll do a video on that. You know, early access continues, Pan American Cruisers, more submarines in the game, terrible. Um, Dyson, about to see. I really think, I don't know. I just have to look, I'm just afraid it's gonna be like another Heisen, but this time it has torpedoes and better speed. And apparently a shorter reload time. So I have to look at the two ships and we have a new map. Um, so that's good because Wargaming was taking a really long time to do these maps. So um, let me know your thoughts uh, on this update in the comments below. Um, it seems kind of mediocre. I mean, some, think some good things, some kind of mediocre things, and then, like, I don't know, like this being able to see, you know, British submarines, <sighs> more submarines in the game is blah. So if you liked today's video, give a thumbs up. If you did not, give a thumbs down. Subscribe if you want to see more. If you're subscribed, thanks so much. I would appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time. Take care. Thank you.